they present to others not to Lisa Prox. Hallelujah. From to God be the glory. Ministries. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. You know God's giving us giving a word. Hallelujah. You want to deliver that word on tonight. She is. Bless the hand.
come on, y'all can sit in here and just chill. I need y'all to keep this atmosphere charged. Hey, I told her. And while she was singing, God was speaking to me about her life.
a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak. First eight, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of the word. Amen. Before I move any further, I want to acknowledge my pastors in their accents. Amen. Hallelujah. My pastor, my cousin, Pastor Roderick, and Cole Pastor Veronica Robinson. Hallelujah. They certainly love to be here tonight, but she's also uh, scheduled to preach um, today. So we have a few conflicts in schedule, but I'm here. And most importantly, Jesus, His Holy Spirit is here. Amen. They send their love. <clears throat> okay, so my topic today is what season are you in? What season are you in? I think there's a, some kind of an echo in this mic. We have a much fixed tone. Subtopic. The Holy Ghost is coming for you. Yes. What season are you in? Subtopic, the Holy Ghost is coming for you. It's quite fitting for this message to come forth today because it's pretty similar to what we are experiencing in the natural. After all, it's been very challenging to really decipher what season we are in. According to the uh, Gregorian calendar, uh, we are in spring season, but the weather seems to be somewhat perplexing because it does not depict spring weather. One day the temperature is 70 degrees, the next day is 38 degrees. Another day you get all in one seasonal experience in one day. <laughs> then within a few days, the weather appears to normalize. And it begins to feel like spring all over again. And notice how the flowers started blooming and the trees started to bud. But sadly, as the temperature started to rise, all of a sudden, snow mysteriously appeared. Y'all remember that? Giving us the impression that it was still winter. Mother Nature's mixed messages seem to be throwing us all for a loop. But not only is the seasons confusing us, the trees are confused. <laughs> the flowers uh, and the birds are posting that they're in a complicated relationship. <laughs> uh, they're tweeting mystifying tweets. They don't know which way to go. Hallelujah. Everyone is confused about the season. Think about uh, the many warm days that we had during the wear season. Some trees, if you were paying attention, started budding and even blooming during the winter because the weather felt like spring. Understand that uh, the trees really rely on the weather to determine their season. See, see the weather helps uh, trees maintain a set growth cycle and therefore the trees must rely on the temperature, the season, hallelujah, uh, to keep them on track. Uh, okay, so let me help you. Some trees need to rest in the cool temperatures before they can safely produce new growth in the spring. They, they, need, to, they need time to rest, to go through a process in order to bloom properly. We're going somewhere. Uh, but when the season is delayed or interrupted uh, by unseasonal elements, the trees begin to produce before it's time. Mm. They begin to respond to what appears to be springtime, and so they start sprouting leaves and flowers and fruit, no matter how short their season of rest was. They automatically respond to the season that's represented. Mm. But when this happens, the trees begin to experience disruptions. Oh Lord, uh, because they, they start producing before it's time. Uh, the budding uh, becomes quite stressful for trees. And, and when this happens, new growth is shot by a sudden freeze and thus cause damage to the tree. Mm. 
The fruit and buds are now exposed to vulnerability because they don't recognize the season they are in. My God, when cold temperatures hit them uh, after they start blooming, the weather then affects their growth because their budding process has already started. Watch this, before it's time. I want you to hear that. Uh, and once the season regulate to its normal seasonal weather, the trees suffer because they have already exerted their energy. My God today, I need to ask you a question. What season are you in? Uh, see, Ecclesiastes symbolizes the season of life. Hallelujah. Like those trees, Solomon the writer makes it very clear. He makes a very clear uh, depiction of what life is like when you are not in the right season. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want you to get your praise on first. Uh, hallelujah. He clearly gives us a clear picture of what a complicated season looks like when you start blooming before your time. In other words, when you start blooming without God. Mm, you exert your energy before time and then take years to begin producing good fruit again. Uh, notice I said again because some of you started out well uh, but was hindered along the way. Uh, you, you forgot about the good fruit of the spirit. Uh, you know, love, uh, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Me, I'm going to need my intercessors because they already quiet. Yeah. 
Jesus. Chapter 22 says, train up a child in the way uh, he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 31. Uh, I know the lady's going to get happy now. Huh? Lord have mercy. I know. Huh? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I got all about Proverbs 31. Because huh? every woman in here thinks she's virtuous. Bless the Lord. Huh? Let's go on a journey. Huh? Lord have mercy. Huh? Every woman that's been in church knows this verse. Huh? You might as well say it with me. Huh? You could probably quote it with your eyes closed. Huh? Come on, ladies. Huh? You know it. Huh? Who can find a virtuous woman? I hear you back there. Huh? Who can find a virtuous wife? Huh? Uh, for her worth is far above rubies. Huh? The heart of her husband safely trusts her. Uh oh. Stop right there. Mmm. Mmm. I'm, I'm stop right there because that's another women's conference. And it'll take about three days to break down that one verse by itself. So we're going to move forward. Is that all right, virtuous ladies? Ha, hallelujah. Thank you, dude. And y'all still with me? Come on, shout hallelujah. In the book of, uh, moving forward, in the book of Song of Solomon, the Songs of Solomon, we see a change. Uh, uh, here we find Solomon to be romantic. Uh, he's falling in love and ready for marriage. Uh, 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 Solomon is ready uh, for Genesis 2 and 23 uh, to manifest in his life. Uh, he said, uh, uh, the man said, uh, this bone uh, of my bone, uh, and this is flesh of my flesh. Uh, in summary, he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one. Uh, Solomon was ready for companionship, you see, uh, and therefore he embraced the kindness of union. Uh, in this season, Solomon is eager to fulfill his humanity, uh, so he embraces love. Uh, Solomon uh, in the Shulamite woman displays their love and desire for one another. Huh? They both describe their emotions, their passions, their appearances, their fears, and so forth and so on. Huh? Here we find Solomon preparing for marriage and, and finally unite in mutual delight. Huh? Solomon is yet still in a good season. Huh? But something happens along the journey. Huh? There seems to be some disruptions along the way. Huh? Uh, uh, there uh, seems to be a hindrance in the growth, like those trees we talked about earlier. Huh? Solomon got confused about his season. Huh? He got perplexed about his walk with God. Huh? The book of Proverbs talks about Solomon's wisdom. The, the songs of Solomon displays his love toward his wife. Huh? But Ecclesiastes gives us a dramatic autobiography of Solomon's life when he departs away from God. Here we see the foolishness of Solomon. In all his wisdom, he is now in a season of folly. He describes life as vanity. Vanity, I'm sorry. Vanity. He describes, he tries to be happy without God by fulfilling every fleshly need. Every want and desire, whatever his heart desired, he pursued after it. Huh? After all, he was King Solomon, the wisest of men. Huh? He had wisdom that was God-given. He had it all. He had all the wealth. He had all the women, fame, wisdom, flock, you name it. He had it. Whatever pleased him, he did it. He lost sight of God. Huh? Solomon tried to uh, uh, every feel of pleasure and endeavor that was known to man. But his conclusion was that all was vanity. Uh, Ecclesiastes shows the farce of his life. Uh, he stepped away from God's principle and defied the commandments to fulfill his desires. Uh, no wonder the sinner and the atheist like to use the book uh, uh, Ecclesiastes to justify their actions. Uh, uh, it's been preached too long without revelatory knowledge. Uh, my God, this book is paralyzed to human philosophy. Uh, the word and even many saints are trying to live life without God. Mm. We, we build happiness based upon our knowledge. 
Elisha versus the knowledge of God. Uh, uh, I don't hear you praying. Uh, we make attempts at, at those things that seem very pleasing to the lustful eye rather than seeking God's instruction for our lives. Uh, we apply scripture based from our intellect versus God's wisdom. Uh, so here, uh, uh, we, uh, like the non-believer, make scriptures applicable to life based on the season of life we decide to live. It's quiet in here, baby. Give me a note of something. Hey, Lord, really need your help, honey. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, so uh, uh, I need to remind you, the Holy Ghost is coming for you this evening. I know you don't like me now, uh, but that's all right. But I got a few out there that's still with me. Are you with me, ladies? <laughs> See, ladies, we have a wonderful way uh, uh, of analyzing the next woman's life uh, rather than assessing our own jacked up lives. Uh, come on, give me a note, baby. I, I know the tables just turned and you don't like me now, uh, but I'm not backing down. Uh, Lord have mercy, uh, because some of you thought it was cute uh, uh, on Friday night uh, when the speaker talked about you riding the wave uh, with your cute surfboard. Uh, hallelujah. They missed the message, baby. Uh, hallelujah. You thought you were still walking in your stilettos uh, while looking down on your sister who wore the war. Oh yeah, uh, uh, you became crabby uh, when you discovered you had somewhat of an anointing. Uh, you meditated thoughts on how to steadily pull your sister down so you can shine. Uh, like Solomon, you left God and, and now you're experiencing life. Uh, you didn't consider how you treated others while you rose to the top.
they made you lose your religion. Baby, you lost that religion a long time ago. Uh, 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 my God! Mm. You laughed at the next sister. Uh, you mocked her. Uh, you tried hard to put her shine out with your shade. Uh, uh, but but uh, all the while while you was doing that, uh, 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 she out of Osiah. Let me let me slow down a minute. Uh, uh, she, she, you became vain. Seeking pleasures of the world while, while that sister you work diligently at pulling back down into the barrel with your crabby self uh, was on her knees seeking God and praying for you. She was fasting and praying for God's wisdom and direction for your life. That's why she really had the love of God. She had the wisdom of God. So all along while you're praying her and think you're praying her, she's still praying for you. She's still interceding for you. Okay, I'm, I'm, this time I saw you.
We do not take time to observe true actions. We see a nice person, and some of us are prone to build a relationship based on surface perceptions. Thus causing much pain and hurt later in your life. I'm talking about being processed too soon by the wrong person. Mm -hmm. See, you, 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 you're just looking at their status, huh? but you can't deserve the intent of their heart, huh? uh, which is desperately wicked towards you. Huh? And by the time you realize what's happening to your life, huh, you become like that tree huh? who bloomed too soon, huh? distressed huh? and irrational. Huh? Now you want to claim you got church hurt. Okay, 
you can begin to desire in your heart. Huh? So don't miss the screw what I'm saying. Huh? But, uh, 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 but if it's done without him, it's all vanity. Huh? I, I don't care how much uh, 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 or many attempts you make at advancing huh? and being intellectual in your, uh, uh, to your constituents. Huh? I don't care how many people you impress. Huh? I don't care how many uh, women organizations you construct. Huh? If you are ungenerated in the sight of God, huh? you are considered fools. Huh? Uh, now that's a hard pill to swallow huh? for those who emphasize on their credentials huh? and their IQs huh? or the amount of knowledge and information they've obtained. Huh? But I need you to swallow that pill right now. Huh? If I'm talking to the Holy Ghost, huh? if the Holy Ghost is talking to you, huh? I just need you to go mm -hmm. and ask the usher for some water. <laughs> swallow that pill. Huh? It's necessary for the next season. Huh? See, some of it talks about the seasons huh? to inform us huh? that without Christ, huh? we will be satisfied, even if we possess the whole world. Huh? Be very careful, woman of God, huh? how you ascertain wisdom. Huh? See, we are now at a pivotal moment in life huh? where women are on the rise, huh? and the enemy has placed a spirit of greed in your heart huh? uh, to the point where you just can't find contentment. You just want, 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 want. Huh? So when you see the next sister doing something, you want to do it too. No matter how, oh my God, no matter how much efforts your husband make to please you, you're still not satisfied. Huh? Uh, and, and, and as a matter of fact, huh, now uh, that some of you are making more money uh, in your role, uh, you're twisted. The home upside down. Because God blessed you, He favored you, He gave you honor. But you flipped the roll. And now you want to wear the paint. Oh. Don't get mad at me, get mad at the Holy Ghost. Ha ah, yeah, yeah. And this is why you find it a challenge to help another sister out. Uh, you're so insecure and afraid that she may outshine you. Uh, 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 so you reject her, forgetting how difficult it was for you to get to your status. Uh, before we can walk in our seasons, lady, uh, we have to understand uh, the revelation of this book. Uh, Ecclesiastes is a guide for us to examine our own heart. Uh, what season are you in? Huh? Let me help you understand your season. Huh? You're in a season of new growth. Huh? Ah, Jesus. Huh? Like those trees and flowers. Huh? You're in a season of being reproduced. Huh? That means a season of being shaped, bent, twisted, and formed so that you can so eloquently bloom into the season God has ordained for you. I came this afternoon huh, to tell you that before you can walk into your season, huh, you must
them know that I'm about to reward them openly. Yes, the Holy Ghost is coming for you. I came to let you know that your season is changing now. How, oh, my God. And that is because you are in sequence with God. Oh, you are on right course with his predetermined plan for your life. You may not understand it. It may seem crazy. But you're in sync to his beat.
Maurice Wilson, I always go year after year. I've been in this walk for about 18 years. I'm gonna just be a little transparent for a minute. Only because God told me to do it. Maybe it's gonna help somebody. When I went to war this year, something happened to me. When I thought I was really in that place with God, I found that at raw, that no matter how people thought, what anointing I carried, that I was nothing. The Lord began to deal with me profoundly at raw, not in a bad way. See, we think because we're not doing those things that we call sin, you think we're doing something because we're not doing those things. Like your brother and sister. They may still be struggling, but you know, you get a little prideful, a little arrogant. And that's not my story, because I right, know I give so much, I give so much. Anything I got, I give it. If there's a need, I work hard to make sure that the need is met. Hey Amen. Can I get a witness? Come on, clap your hand. But this encounter wasn't a bad encounter, it was a good encounter. The Lord began to talk to me about the last 18 years of my life and women of God who spoke witchcraft over my life. Y'all yeah. uh, not ready for this. Y'all not ready for this. you not ready for this. And he began to deal with me about all the struggles, mother, that I had encountered, things that absolutely made no sense in my life. Every time a door opened for me, it shut. Every time it appeared that I was rising or walking in my healing, something else came. Greater than what I was already dealing with. Come on, baby, work with me. Give me something. I don't really want you to take me down, but I need something. Come on. Y'all know my flow. <laughs> Y'all know my flow. <clears throat> uh, the last service of raw. There, there was a situation that happened. I'm just going to be transparent. I don't use the back to do this, but I'm going to pick up. There was a situation that occurred where the Holy Spirit told me to sit in a certain seat. And I did. But then someone came to sit next to me that had a problem. And I wanted to move my seat. Y'all don't want to be real. But y'all know it yourself. I didn't know that was my assignment. But because I was looking at the issues and I didn't want to be bothered, I moved my seat. I heard the Holy Ghost prophet say, I didn't tell you to move your seat, go back. I didn't go back because I didn't want to be bothered. This is all I know, so I grew up on her. She began to go down the road and anointing people and giving them shots and the Holy Ghost and giving them blessings. I looked up on the screen, and when I looked up on the screen, she was in that row. Not only did she go to that row, but she touched every single person in that row, and I missed the move of God. Okay, y'all can hear me. I miss God. And he said, so I'm sitting there now and myself, that's okay. You know, y'all know how we do. Well, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable with That's what I mean. We're comfortable in church. We're comfortable. We're just coming in form and fashion. Get comfortable doing what we're used to doing. But God was trying to do something different that night. He said, I don't care how anointed you may think you are. He said, I told you to sit there. And now I'm making an example 
out of your situation because this entire conference, you will not get what you came for. Okay. So I, I still was trying to hold myself, but really I was broken. I was so messed up because I missed God. Okay? I missed God. So uh, the moral of the story is this. Uh, uh, as the service moved on, it got higher and higher. And I'm watching everybody praise God. And I'm feeling empty like Solomon. I'm empty because I miss God for one judge, one wrong judgment. Too long have we come to church with the wrong conception about people. And so uh, I prayed. I went to my room, and y'all, I was so messed up. I was trying. I tried. I tried to keep a straight face. I was all talk. He said, "No, you're gonna watch that screen, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna do what I say." So uh, I began at that point to just try to obey everything I thought the Lord was saying to me at that point. He said, "I set her there because the anointing on your life." would have just soothed those spirits that were in her. But you moved. He said, but because you have a pure heart, it was like Solomon, a vanity, a vanity moment, empty. I felt like my life was purposeless at that very moment. Somebody clap your hands with Jesus. During the rest of the, you can make some of that, during the rest of that conference, I tried to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I really went to my room and I cried out and I repented to God and so forth and so on. And he said, everything I tell you from this moment on, I need you to do. So if it was so a seed when I had it, I was in my pocket, but I was just so, I was finding money, I was just doing whatever. If it was not eat pony, pony, I would be empty. Whatever he said at that moment. The last day of the conference, uh, Dr. Wilson said, the Lord told me to do a special anointing for the five-fold ministry. Y'all like, I had me dead. Because I'm in the five-fold ministry. Amen. So I said, thank you, Lord. Now, let me tell you, people not, if you have a pure heart, he will not leave you in that place. I said, if you have a pure heart, see, God knows your motives. He knows your intent. I don't care how much you try to post whatever you want to post on Facebook. God sees you. He knows the very intent of your heart. I don't care how many friends you gather together and try to pray. Uh, God sees the wickedness of your heart. But he saw my purity, he saw my because I, I felt so bad. And really, I was trying to find my lady. I didn't see the lady anymore after that night. And that scam was. But he called, uh, she calls a, a, a special prayer line for the fivefold ministry. And they did apostles, pastors, and so forth, evangelists, teachers, prophets. We all had to go in this line. And I didn't know that was going to be the night that my life completely changed. Mother, we had to go through a line of about six anointed, dynamic women and men of God. And I'm telling you, y'all, if you've ever experienced one of those shots, I'm telling you, you won't leave this world for me. You know, what in the world just happened to me? I had to go through six people, each one of them lay hands. By the time I got to the last person, the way that his glory felt so strong on me that I could not stand, I could not see. I couldn't breathe. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all know how we sing that song? Take my breath away, only you. Take my breath. No, he took my breath that night. I literally could not breathe. I was like this. <gasps> literally, this is a true testimony. I could not breathe. He said, that's how quick. Well, say church. When I finally got up off the floor, every piece of jewelry that was on me literally was broken. My earrings were 
broke, my necklace was broke. I'm talking about some pretty stuff, y'all. I, I wanted to get upset that I was just too scared because I couldn't breathe a few minutes ago. So I said, well, bless God, I think I get a new piece of jewelry. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, y'all, I'm telling you, when the power of God, then Mother, uh, 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 Mother Capri came and she said, baby, she said, God give you what you came for. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Oh. While I was on that floor, I began to see angels. God opened my eyes to see things in the spirit that I've never seen. I'm telling you, I'm not that same lady that y'all know. He opened my eyes to see things that I've never seen before. He said, Lisa, for the last 18 years, he said, people were speaking witchcraft over your life. He said, but I brought you the raw to break that demon off. He said, you are in a new season. He said, every way you go, the anointing of God is going to flow in ways like it's never flowed. See, some of y'all still sitting there. You wait for me to lay hands on you. But I got to help you. Are getting proper oxygen. 
is not getting what it's so, uh, the supplements that it needs because of the fasting. But the devil is a lie. And so, okay, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. See, the enemy is trying to get me off course. He's trying to move me from my divine purpose. Huh? So, 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 so now he's attacking my body. And I can't really breathe. And every time people see me, they say, you look tired. When the truth of the matter is, I am very lethargic because I don't have no energy because I'm extremely anemic is what they're saying. Oh, Jesus, y'all don't hear me. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to preach this message, Minister Betty, but I said, God, I'm going in the name of the Lord. So all week long, huh, they've been calling my phone to get me to come in huh, to do procedures. Huh. I said, I'll do the procedure huh, after I preach the word of God. Huh, but I'm going to show the devil huh, just who I am. Huh. I walk in authority. Huh. I walk in power. Huh. Because I really want you to examine your life. 
but she is connected to the anointing. There is nothing that you will lack.
Yeah. 